everybody welcome back to my channel today we have an art journal tutorial and we're keeping it simple and clean we're going to use two stencils two napkins two shades of green and a couple techniques so I'm starting with this lovely corner napkin from Ninny's napkin it's called festive May and it has this unique shape so the possibilities, it presents different possibilities for us. I'm just removing the excess plies. I'm using some painter's tape. That's the blue that you see. And there are two plies. With most napkins, there are two plies and you do need to remove them. You only use the top colored layer. Now I'm thinking that I'm going to put this across the bottom of the page probably offset it. I don't like things to be perfectly in the center. And I'm just cutting the napkin in half because I'm only going to use half of it. The other half is going to be folded and put in the page protector storage system that I have. And I'll put a link to that video. Now, I was sure I was going to do it across the bottom, but I thought I'd play with the composition and it actually looks rather cute with one in each corner. So you could also do that, or just one on a smaller page. This one, this time I'm working in my nine by 12 Canson mixed media art journal. So now that I've decided that I'm going to use it across the bottom of the page, I am water cutting the excess off. Now, with this one, you can see there's a lot of white napkin around the lilies of the valley. So that will factor into what kind of background I use. Because whatever, if I put the color down, that's going to come through. And I don't want to lose my napkin. I also know that I'm going to have to paint over this lily of the valley to make it stand out. I don't want to see the white of the napkin. I want that to go completely clear. And I want to see the color come through. But that also means that the lily of the valley, the white, is also going to get discolored. But there's workarounds for all of those issues. And you're going to see that in this video. So right off the bat, as soon as we remove the excess napkin, it just looks better on the page. And now I can finalize it. And as I said, my plan is to skew it to the left or to the right, not have it dead center. It's just more pleasing to the eye. So now I'm pulling out a bunch of jelly prints, not to use on my page, but to audition for the color and maybe the pattern behind my focal image. So I'm going through the yellows and then I go through the greens and I take some pictures along the way to decide what looks best. I don't want the background to overpower the focal image. I like this. I like the green with the yellow. And I like this one. In fact, this is the one that I'm kind of leaning towards. So the first technique that we're doing with the stencil, we are using this Swiss dot stencil and I am brushing thick gesso through the stencil. This is giving an imperfect print. Some are full circle, some are like half moons. And it's giving texture to the page as well. So we've got pattern, the circles, as well as the texture. And I'm just going all over the page. And since I know I'm using my Simplify sentiment pack, I want it to go simple. I didn't want, I wanted pure, crisp, clean colors. So I chose the greens and white and round. Now, the other reason that I chose this Swiss dot stencil is the lay, lily of the valleys kind of look like little round white dots. 
So the second technique that I'm going to use, I'm going to remove paint through the stencil. Now I grabbed this script stencil. I can't remember the name of it. It's, it's from the crafters workshop. I don't end up using it, but I wanted to give it a try. And while I liked the marks that it was leaving, it wasn't, didn't go with the picture in my head. So I'm adding more paint and I grab the kaleidoscope stencil and I'm mixing the paints here that I have are green, yellow green and hookers green. And this is the kaleidoscope stencil and I'm pulling it out. Now I chose this one because the, it mirrors the shape of the leaves in the napkin. I like to pick some things that work together. They mirror each other in some ways. So here I'm using a baby wipe and rubbing it through the stencil. My baby wipe's a little too dry, so I'm adding some water and just removing it. And this is giving some nice pattern to my background, but subtle. I don't want the pattern in the background to overcome or go the focal image. Now I must say this, this page was gessoed and in order to do the removing the paint stencil technique, removing paint through a stencil technique, you need to gesso your surface first. So I'm just going around the page section by section. Now this middle part where I know I'm going to be putting the napkin, I'm deliberately making lighter because I don't want to discolor the Lily of the Valleys as much. Whereas I'm adding some darker colors on places that aren't right behind the Lily of the Valley focal image. So section by section, put the paint down, remove it, move on, do the next section. Paint, remove it, move on. You don't want the paint to dry. If you're trying this to removing paint through a stencil technique, don't give up. It took me a lot of tries to figure, figure out how to make it work and doing it section by section. For me, that was the key. We are very much staying in the same tone. We've got greens and whites. That's it. Very simple. Then I grabbed the Swiss Dot stencil and I placed it over top of the thick gesso that we stenciled. And this is just bringing out that. It's showing off the, te the texture and the pattern. So that combined with the gesso through the stencil is the second technique. Then I want to mirror or make it look like there's some Lily of the Valley in the background. So I'm using white acrylic paint through that Swiss dot stencil. And when I put down the Lily of the Valley napkin, it's just going to, it looks like that's off in the distance. So it's like a field of Lily in the Valley, Lily of the Valley. And you know, those, though they tend, that plant tends to grow very quickly and spread. So you do get a field of it. This Swiss Dot stencil is a great basic stencil. Usability, huge. Goes with any kind of page. And I like the scale of it. Then I decide I'm going to splatter with white paint. This kind of lightens it a little bit.
Now I'm ready to decide, finalize the quote. And this is from my one of my newest sentiment packs, Simplify. Simplify is my word of the year. So I made a collection of quotes about simplifying things to keep my focus on my goal, on my word. So I've picked out a few that I have in my binder and printed them off. And now I'm going to audition them. Life is as simple as we allow it to be. I like the dark font that would fit there. Maybe a little too big, but I can resize my digital sentiments. There's beauty and simplicity. I like that one, the script font. A simple life is a beautiful life. I like the white inside there. So many of these all would fit and work. It's a matter of personal preference. So I use the one that says clutter smothers, simplicity breathes. Now that's the entire quote, but when you're using it, you can use just parts of it. There's nothing saying you have to use the whole thing. And many of my sentiments, you can do that. Here's the quote as it comes out. And you can see I've cut it apart to fit it on my page. So you can add your own personality to the sentiments. You can mix and match from words from one sentiment to the next. Now I have this other napkin. It's called Color Butterflies Yellow. And I water cut the smaller butterfly. It just seemed that I needed something else there. And I wanted to keep it bright and yellow. There's the bigger one. That just seemed too big for the page. Out of scale with the Lily of the Valley below. This one seemed to be a better fit. So don't forget to mix and match. I have other butterfly napkins. That green one would have looked good. The orange one would, live, would have looked good. But I'm looking for, you know, the size and the color as well. But I wanted to keep it simple, so I didn't really want to introduce a new color. Here's another napkin from Ninny's Napkins. Lots of choices. I could have used that one. That would have been a good size. That one's a little too small. I also have these bees. That would look cute on there, although I would have put several, but it really didn't go with the quote. So Now it's time to glue down the napkin. So I flip it over like you saw. I'm putting fluid matte medium down and then I push it down and then I put the gel or the fluid matte medium on top. Be gentle because the napkin gets fragile when it's wet. But flipping it, we're doing one half and the other is the best way. And you can see that the white of the napkin has totally disappeared and you're seeing whatever colors behind it come through, which gets rid of the white of the napkin, win, but it also put, makes the lily of the valley green because it's white. So we're gonna deal with that coming soon. Like those lilies of the valley just get lost with the pattern that's coming through from the background. So I'm grabbing copy paper and I'm going to glue the butterfly down with my matte medium on the copy paper. The reason for this is I don't want the green coming through this butterfly. I want this butterfly to stay yellow. I want that pop of yellow on the page. So I set that aside to dry and now I'm painting, going over these Lily of the Valley and with white gesso and pretty much 
much globbing on paint. This is giving a very painterly effect. I'm using a, it's a bit thicker liner brush and I'm globbing it on. I'm not being too particular to stay between the lines. Sometimes I'm making it bigger. Sometimes I'm making it smaller. My goal here is to make it stand out from the background. And we'll get in frame shortly. And you can see the ones that I've painted and the ones that haven't been painted, the difference. And I'm just globbing it on. I'm not being particular. I'm basically getting the bell shape for some of it. Some of it's rounder than ones, the buds that are a little less open. Your eye will recognize that this is Lily of the Valley and it will see that. It's a brain trick. So I add one coat of gesso, I'm globbing it on. If it's not opaque enough or white enough, I'm gonna come back and add more. Everyone is going to be slightly different, so you're going to get that variation in opaqueness, brightness. Then I'm coming in with some Naples yellow, just a little bit of yellow at the edge, at the bottom of the each of the Lily of the Valley flowers. This yellow ties in with the yellow of the butterfly and just adds that little bit of detail back in. If you look at the original, it kind of had some of that and some brown and a little bit of orange in there. So you can see on the right, the Lily of the Valleys have been painted and on the left, they haven't, they're very green because of course the color from the background is shining through. So I'm just gonna continue globbing on my gesso base coat, adding that little bit of white, adding that little bit of Naples yellow. This is a scary process when you start, but I guarantee that when you start doing this, you're going to get in the flow of it. And you can see how that the Lily of the Valleys are just popping now off the page by adding that coat of white. It's also adding, because I'm kind of globbing it on, texture. So it looks like it's painted. It doesn't look like I've just glued down a napkin. You can see here how the Lily of the Valleys really, because that background was darker, you really lost them. So I'm just adding them back and using the napkin as the guide. If you're unsure, you can look at the original napkin to see the shape and the color of it. But you'll see very quickly, you're going to become a pro at it. And then I'm adding the Naples yellow. And again, I'm just very loosely doing it, just dabbing it here and there. Just 
not overthinking it. Simplify, clear your mind of that clutter and all that noise. It's got to be so perfect. There is a coupon code in the description box below from Ninny's Napkins. If you're interested in either purchasing the napkins or any of the art journaling and mixed media supplies, she carries a lot, including some of the TCW stencils. There are also other affiliate links. Full disclosure, I do get a small commission when you shop through an affiliate link, but it does not cost you more. So as always, shop for the best deals. And thank you if you go through my links. Stop every once in a while, check out, hold it out. How does it look? Now I'm going to go over the leaves of the Lily of the Valley and I'm using again the Hooker's Green, the uh, Yellow Green, as well as White Gesso. I'm not adding any other color to it. I'm sticking, keeping it simple. Simplicity breathes. I'm just adding some, looking at where the napkin, where it's dark, where it's light, and just painting over that to get that painterly effect and make my focal image on this dark journal page stand out from the background. I wanted to darken it a little bit. Often when I'm using the acrylic paint, I have thinned it slightly, added just a smidge of water. And I'm looking at the original to see where they add some highlights, where they've added some shadows. And I'm trying to duplicate that. And as you're mirroring that and looking at that, that's how we learn too. the dots that we put with the gesso through the stencil, you can't see that in the pictures, but it's there. In real life, the texture shows through. I find using a smaller brush here helps me be a little bit freer and really achieve that painterly effect. I think it must be, you know, the coming of spring that's got me thinking green and lush. I'm adding a little bit of black to the hooker's green and just adding some shadows on the leaves and the branches. Again, just with my liner brush. A lot of these finishing details are what really makes your focal image pop. It really sets off the page. Doing the background is quick and easy. It's the finishing details that take the most time. 
you make a mistake, you can come in with a baby wipe and wipe it off with acrylic paint. Because in, in my case, I typically, because everything's acrylic, it's all permanent. Originally, I thought I was going with a more yellow background. What do you think? Did, would you have liked, would this have worked with a yellow background? I've got another half of the napkin. Maybe I can try it with yellow. So now that the butterfly is dry, I am going to cut the butterfly out. If I'd gone with the yellow background, I would have picked a different color butterfly. I wouldn't have gone yellow because it wouldn't have shown up on the yellowish background. So that's cut out and we're just going to find its final placement. I'm going to glue this down before I do some line work with my general, General's charcoal pencil. The reason being that will smear. I don't want to put any wet medium on top of that. So you need to be mindful of what products you're using that will reactivate and when you use them. It's not about not using it, it's about being selective and then working around it if you've done it. So after it's dry, I'm taking my General's Charcoal Pencil and I'm outlining the leaves and going around the Lily of the Valley. I'm holding my pencil really lightly and just very getting a sketchy line around it no precision here at all but it's giving that it's outlining it adding some another level of interest adding more shading to the leaves and it's just making those lily of the valleys stand out and because there's texture there, that really helps it become super sketchy and incomplete and, and lovely. So I'm just tracing around all of them. I'm not trying to be perfect at all. Then I decide I'm gonna go around the butterfly to make it stand out because it's part of the focal image. And just adding those sketchy lines in. Remember, whatever we get from the napkin or a free printable or whatever we're using, magazine picture, that's just the space. We can add to it. Then I'm taking that General's Charcoal Pencil and smudging around the edge of the page. This frames our page, of course. And there we have the finished page. Almost. I'm looking for my Secura glaze pen and I'm going to go over my, the Simplicity Breathes part. My printer ran out of toner and so it was a little bit light, so I just want to make it dark. The Secura glaze pen is dimensional and glossy. You can see how lovely that is. It makes a nice addition for your, for your words or for details on your page. And there we have it. Thank you so much for joining me. Click the bell. Make sure you're going to be notified of upcoming videos so you don't miss any. Leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Follow me on Instagram. Until next time, go get creative.